everyone, welcome to this course on vulnerability management. In this video, we'll be looking at one of our, another of our objectives, uh, which is the best practice to implement in vulnerability management. Alright, let's dive in. Alright, so um, we've looked at other um, objectives in this course and uh, we actually want to look at this also. I uh, actually want to uh, take you through also on how you can implement, uh, what are the best practices to implement in vulnerability management. Uh, I've actually to my 16th here and I'm going to take you through them one after the other. Uh, these are my own best, based on my experience and my vulnerability management, these are my best practices, best practices that I feel that would, would help organizations uh, when they're implementing the vulnerability management. Alright, so let's look at the first, of, the first one which is the vulnerability management strategy is key. Um, in implementing vulnerability management, one of the key things uh, your vulnerability management should be built, it should be built around three things. Number one, it should be built around people, it should be built around processes, and it should be built around technology. These are the key bedrock or foundation that your vulnerability management um, strategy should be built on. And when we talk about people, uh, we talk about uh, roles, we talk about security, we, we talk about roles and responsibility, pardon me. Uh, we talk about roles, roles and responsibilities. And in those roles, we have uh, four different roles that your vulnerability management strategy should um, pay attention to. Uh, number one is, is your security. Um, security manager uh, number two is the asset owner number three is the vulnerability engineer sorry about my handwriting <laughs> engineer number four is the system engineer as well and uh, these roles are very very critical in your vulnerability management program and also for security managers, security managers as they provide uh, an overall overview as to managing the security of your organization. So these are should be considered as a senior management. So what they are responsible for, they are responsible, um, they are actually responsible for creating policies and enforcing those policies enforcing those policies so once uh, a security um, executive or, or a security manager um, provides these policies uh, one, of the, one of the things that those policies would include it should have a scope um, it should have a scope what scope uh, would the vulnerability management cover is it going to cover network security application security a database security it all depends on your organization and what exactly you want to uh, what that want to be what that policy would mean is meant to cover another thing it also needs to have um, it also needs to have um, roles and responsibilities as well uh, who is going to be managing what uh, who is going to be deploying the, doing what and what in the, in the organization as we guess that uh, another thing we also need to look at is um, we also need to look at uh, that policy also look into scanning um, frequencies meaning that how often are we going to scan our critical assets and we also need to identify those critical assets uh, another thing also that the policy should include is remediation strategy uh, what's our remediation strategy uh, overall? How do we intend to remediate strategy, uh, remediate vulnerability? Is it going to be via age? Are we going to say that vulnerabilities within this particular age should be remediated within particular time, time frame? We also need to look at mean time to remediate, meaning that what's the average time we remediate um, critical vulnerabilities? So it, it, it might be within 72 hours to, it might be within 24 hours to 72 hours depending on how the kind of vulnerabilities you're trying to remediate so these are some of the key points that um, your vulnerability management in terms of policies um, should actually 
um, include and this um, function is done by the security um, manager so to speak and the other thing again that we need to look at is um, the asset owners who is going to be our asset owners we need to be able to identify each of our assets and who are the asset owners asset owners are the one that that, de that determines the security controls that is being applied to a particular asset so they, they own those assets they know they manage the data on those assets and the security controls that should be implemented on those assets so another thing again is the vulnerability engineer what the vulnerability engineer does that it provides this is the one who installs the vulnerability scanning tool or the vulnerability management solution tool or, or the, this is the person that also runs the scan um, that runs the scan in those environments so depending on the frequency of the scans the vulnerability engineer is responsible for that and the last thing is system engineer the system engineer is actually responsible for remediating um, vulnerabilities so this system engineer will be will be the one to remediate um, specific assets, uh, specific um, vulnerabilities that deal with specific assets. So, for example, for let's say database vulnerability, for example, the system engineer would be if the system engineer, there's definitely the system engineer will be in database team, and that would be the person that will remediate those vulnerabilities uh, based on those databases. So these are the roles and responsibilities. Um, that should be included in your vulnerability management uh, program and also I spoke about um, technology so technology has to do with the tool uh, you want to use to implement your vulnerability management it could be tenable it could be rapid 7 um, it could be quality so it all depends on the tool that is appropriate um, or base that you feel will be able to help you to implement uh, your vulnerability management um, strategies that you have. So vulnerability management strategy is is very very key. This is the number one thing that that needs to be sorted out. It needs to be clear, and it needs to be communicated across the entire organization as regards how the organization intends to respond or manage vulnerability in the entire organization. All right. Okay. So let's look at number two. Number two has to do with ensure you have a full visibility of your entire asset landscape. And what this actually speaks to is that you can't you can actually protect um, what you can see. Uh, we should be you, what you can see. So visibility is, is very very key in vulnerability management. You've got to ensure that you have full visibility. I mean, you know where all of your assets are. You know their location. You know its location. You know its asset owners. You know its owners. And you also know the resources. Um, that each of the assets um, actually have so what i mean is the operating system running on your assets in terms of storage space on that asset um, uh, memory in terms of memory look memory um, the memory on that assets and uh, also the applications um, running on those assets so you need to have visibility and also the owners of those applications uh, you've got to know what, what and what runs on each of the assets in your organization and if they actually um, if they are also have connectivity to the internet uh, it's also very very important so you know if it's an internet facing uh, type of asset so those classification um, all of those details needs to be need to have a full visibility and need to be aware um, of, of those um, information as regards your asset so it's, it's very critical and to ensure you have this done um you you might decide you want to use you might say you want to use um your vulnerability management solution to achieve this or you might use a third party to asset management solution that is dedicated for asset management that provides full um visibility full components and other components that makes your asset asset management very rich you can actually use that and integrate into your vulnerability management solution. so it all depends on whichever strategy actually works for you and also for the tools you need to select the tool that will that aligns with your vulnerability management strategy so you need to ensure that the tool you're using it will help you to achieve your your vulnerability management strategy and if you're choosing your tool uh, some of the criteria you might have to look at you might have to look at deployment uh, deployment type meaning that is it is it going to is it cloud-based or is it on premise you, you need to consider that uh, before selecting your tool you also need to look at the licensing model of those tools uh, which is very critical how, how do they license their their tool 
is it IP based? Is it is it is it agent based? So it all depends on how the tool is being licensed. Uh, also, you also need to pay attention to support. Um, how would this tool be? What, what kind of support contract you want to have as regards this tool? So these are some of the things that you might have to add. Um, you might think about when selecting um, your tools. Um, also, um, you also need to scan. Um, you need to scan your critical assets. You need to scan your critical assets with Bilali. How often do you want to scan your assets? Is it going to be your critical asset? So, for example, if, an, if it's an asset that is facing the internet, you might decide you want to do it once a week and you scan them, you know, depending on the frequency. You also need to pay attention to um, your regulatory standards. So, if it's a PCI um, DSS um, asset, for example, you might have to scan it once a week and you know, so it all depends on your strategy, what your, your business is all about and how often um, or, or the exposure that asset definitely has. So you have to pay attention to that before you come up with scanning your environment. But I don't, I don't subscribe you scanning once a year <laughs> or twice in a year. It, it's very important that you have your scan done at least at the minimum once a month. Once a month at the minimum at the least. And also depending on how critical your asset are. But I always recommend that you do your scanner at least one, once a week is, is actually very fine. Uh, also, uh, you also, I also, I want them also recommend here is include penetration testing. And penetration testing is a very valuable um, arsenal you should have when um, thinking about vulnerability management. Uh, because penetration testing gives you an opportunity to be able to uh, penetrate your environment and see what what what's the strength of your security controls and the vulnerabilities that are going to be identified how do you what what impact would it have it is if it's actually really really you know if it a threat attack threat actor actually take advantage of that of that um of that vulnerability expect that vulnerability what impact will it have on your business so a pension testing a pension testing provides you with capabilities to do that so you can employ a pension consult a pension testing consultant you know, and they can help you run a penetration testing on your existing security controls, you know, to help you identify or understand your current security posture um, as we get um, when it comes to managing vulnerability in your environment. And finally, uh, we also need to look at remediating the vulnerabilities um, promptly based on risk. Uh, so, a lot of organizations remediate their vulnerabilities using different strategies. Um, some use severity levels only. Um, some use risk, but in the industry today, it is it is uh, is a known fact that risk-based um, remediation is actually recommended. And the reason being that um, if you focus on risk, it helps you to minimize or help you to remediate your vulnerabilities faster. So I've I've looked at the vulnerabilities that have been identified by the scanner using different severity level, critical, high, medium, and low. You then have to run, then have to do a risk assessment to actually really filter through those critical or high vulnerabilities and look at it that these vulnerabilities, what what threat will it pose to our environment? And if you look at it compared to your business and say, oh, such and such and such would have high threat after running your risk assessment on those um, vulnerabilities or risk analysis on those vulnerability on those severity levels then you can you know narrow down your your remediation to if it's 50 vulnerabilities considering the risk you might narrow it down to five and that makes your remediation um, actually very fast time in remediating your vulnerabilities uh, another thing i also want to mention remediating vulnerabilities you also have to involve change management um, and also i recommend you have like a test lab um, where you remediate vulnerability especially when it has to do with patches so it's also good you test your patch before you implement them in production environment. So those are my five, six recommendations that um, based on my experience and my exposure to vulnerability management, these are the six uh, best practices that I feel would help your organization um, make your vulnerability management stronger uh, by, by implementing or following some of these recommendations. Alright, thank you very much for viewing this long. I hope to see you in my next video. Bye for now.